literally anybody could be a graphic designer. Did you believe that? People think you have to be super talented to be a graphic designer. How do I know that? Because sometimes I'll be telling someone about my craft and they'll say, Aren't you a graphic designer? Yes, I am. You must be a really good drawer. I'm not sure that drawer is a word. Actually, I know a lot of artists that are much better at drawing than I am. Well, I loved art class, even though I wasn't a really good drawer myself. You know, there's a lot more that goes into being a graphic designer than just being good at drawing. You're responsible for visually communicating your client's messaging to their audience with relevancy and as clearly as possible. Though it does help to have a basic understanding of the compositional layout of graphical elements alongside your text or images. Drawer is too a word. You may be surprised to know that there are some fantastic graphic designers out there who are really not that good at drawing. I'm not saying that having a natural skill for drawing wouldn't be a great benefit for your design career. It would. I'm just saying that it's perfectly legal to kind of suck at drawing and have a really good design still. The good news is that there are a great many designs that suck for a time until they begin to not suck. Have you ever heard anybody say that the design just came to them? I really like your logo. Thanks. Yeah, I was just taking a walk and it just kind of came to me. <clears throat> I'm not sure that's entirely possible. I mean, I could see how you might come up with a concept in this way, but to say that the detail of the imagery and typographical elements just assembled themselves in your mind without having had to make any adjustments, sounds like a stretch. There is this really great superpower that all designers of all skill levels have available to them called the power of revision. Yes, I was floored when I found out that I could take a rough sketch, lay it onto a light table, trace it over with a clean sheet of paper, making small improvements, then trace over that drawing with another sheet of paper, more adjustments, and over and over again, witnessing a complete transformation from my original sketch. This is a great practice to get into if, like me, your best attempts at drawing a horse often turn out looking like a dog. <laughs> Try the power of revision yourself, watch the magic happen. A really great perk to being a graphic designer is that you can take on as many projects as you think you need and do the work when you're at your most creative. Also, if you're a freelance graphic designer and you have other talents, you don't have to put all of your energy solely into doing just graphic design work for clients. For instance, you could design t-shirts and sell them on an Etsy shop online. You can find a part-time job and make extra money that way. I actually get out of the lab one day a week to measure windows for my uncle's window company. It gives me a break from sitting at a desk all week and is a steady and reliable source of income. Another way to break free from your workstation is to craft things with your hands that people need. I like to make signs because it pairs my love for the designer side to my love for building things. All in all, I hope that I helped you to get a sense for whether the life of a graphic designer is for you or not for you. If being creative comes naturally to you, you can communicate well, have a desire to help people, they want to live the life of your dreams, dive in and see if it's the life for you. Well, that's it for the video. Let me know in the comments below if you're thinking about becoming a graphic designer. What is it that attracted you to the creative fields? I'm looking forward to your responses. If you've never watched one of my videos before, click the subscribe button below. Until next time, my fellow daydreamers, Toodles.